there kids, it's your good buddy Uncle Ben back again, this time with 30% more disappointing facial stubble. This is really just not working. On today's installment of FAQ, I'm going to be answering your all's questions about cool stuff like Eric Johnson's triad playing style, what recording software to use, and all kinds of other stuff. But before we get to the questions, let's stop in at Uncle Ben's Boombox and find out what I've been jamming out to lately. Here lately, I've been absolutely addicted to the sheer brutality and energy that can be found on the newest cattle decapitation record, Death Atlas. And I gotta say, this is kind of a change of pace for me because I'm not really super into a lot of the like extreme metal and death metal and you know technical death metal and stuff like that. That's usually not really my bag, but there's something about this record that is just so unique. I keep going back to it over and over. Let me just tell you a few of the things that I like about it that make it stand out from the horde of other technical death metal albums. One, they don't tune down. So that means whenever the riffs get really technical and stuff, you can still hear every single note that's going on. It's one thing that kind of drives me crazy is a lot of these you know, really technical bands tune down super low, then play these really complex riffs, and you just can't really tell what's going on. But with uh, Cattle Decap using standard or again, maybe near standard tuning, everything is nice and crisp and clear. Two, the vocals are fucking nuts. I have no idea how the singer pulls so many inhuman sounds out of himself. There's times on the record where you'll get, you know, typical kind of cookie monster or bathtub draining, you know, low death metal growls and stuff like that. But there's other parts that I think the only way I can think to describe it is it sounds like an entire chorus of like angry golems just making inhuman sounds. There's a high scream on the track Vol Volturus, Volturus, whatever, that I, I can't even believe is human. It sounds like somebody is like ripping a cat in half. It's about halfway through the song. Oh, when is that? It's about two minutes and 20 seconds into the song and you have to hear it to believe it. It's one of the most like throat blistering sounds I've ever heard a human being make. But it's not all just brutal stuff too. He does a lot of melodic things where he'll layer all these uh, you know, layers of harmony on top of all these screams and put them over a really cool melodic chord progression. It's really unique and at times, I guess the closest thing I could compare it to would be like Devin Townsend or something like that with the way that he layers a lot of his harsh vocals, you know. It's kind of sort of like that, but at the same time, just way more pissed. And C, they write songs. One of the main reasons I can't get into like a lot of technical death metal records is the fact that most of the songs just feel like an excuse to cram as many unrelated riffs and solos into it as humanly possible. That's not at all what Cattle to Cap does on this album. Every song has distinct hooks, riffs, choruses, verses, defined song structure. But at the same time, it's not just verse, chorus, bridge, chorus kind of stuff. They're unique. But every song has unique elements that make it feel like its own piece of the record. So if you're like me and you're stuck at home doing your workouts because your gym is closed during all this mess, Next time you're pumping iron, pump up the jams with Death Atlas by Cattle Decapitation. But hey, before we get to the questions, let's talk about what all the cool kids are doing to support their favorite trashy looking uncle. It's helping support my channel by becoming one of my loyal patrons over on my Patreon page. Yeah! Go over to patreon.com slash benellerguitars, sign up for the tier that suits you best today, and start reaping the benefits in the form of downloadable tabs, backing tracks, tons of bonus lessons, and so much other cool stuff. And don't forget, all of my patrons also get very special preferential treatment for getting their questions answered on future installments of FAQ. So be sure to go to patreon.com slash benellerguitars, sign up today, and get your question answered a lot faster. Thanks. For example, our first question today comes from my loyal patron, Craig Merriman, who asks about Eric Johnson's style chords, spread triads, moving notes around to get those heavenly sounding chords. You must be talking about this kind of thing. <laughs> So we've all heard Eric use those kinds of licks in his soloing and his rhythm playing as well. And we're just barely gonna scratch the surface and cover some basic ideas about this because obviously there's so much to what he does with those spread triads in his playing. 
but this will give you some good basic ideas that you can use to start working these into your plane right away. And because I know somebody will ask, I'm playing my GNL Legacy here with bare knuckle veneer board pickups in it. EVH 2x12, I have a Rev G20, which is their little you know 20 watt head that they make. I've got it on the 4 watt setting right now and I'm playing through a Wampler Pinnacle as well as the High Wind Dire Wolf Overdrive. I've got the Dunnable Eidolon in the effects loop for the delay and reverb. Okay, these things aren't all that hard to visualize if you just look at them for what they are, which is a cool way to play a triad. Now check this out. If I have like a C major triad, right? It's going to be like this. A C triad is the notes C, E, and G, the root, third, and fifth of the C scale. Uh, we could play it like this. There's the C, there's the E, there's the G, right? Root, third, fifth. Now that you've played that triad, I want you to remember the power chord, okay? Root, third, fifth. Remember the root and fifth. That's the power chord shape. This is kind of the visual foundation of this that's easy to look at. Now let's take the third, that note right there, right? And let's displace that note up an octave. Okay, so we're taking the third, the E note, and we're gonna move it to here. So this is the third up one octave. Now if you combine that with your power chord that we talked about earlier, your root and fifth, then with this high third, you get the basis of what Eric does a lot of times in his triad playing. But you could take that same little platform that we have and modify it to make it into a minor shape too. Again, this is easy to see. It's a power chord and the B string is on the same fret as the fifth was. But we can make this minor really easily by working in a flat third interval. So let's go up here to the, uh, to the second chord in the key. Let's go to D minor and look at that triad and treat it the same way. So for minor triad, we got root flat third fifth, right? Remember our major was root third, minor is root flat third. So just lower that third one fret. We're gonna end up with D, F, and A. F and A. The old Cliff Burton surprise. Now what I want you to do with that is to again take that flat third, in this case, raise it up an octave, add that to your power chord. And that right there is your easy spread minor triad. So we got C major, D minor. What I did is I ran these up diatonically through the key there. So I moved up the next one here to being E minor, F major, G major, A minor. And then let's get to the real saucy one here, B diminished. Now a diminished triad is root and flat third like your minor triad was. But then you also have a flat fifth, okay? So instead of having the power chord, we're gonna have the Black Sabbath, you know, the little flat five interval right here. So keep your visual locked onto that, not on the B power chord, but on the B flat five kind of thing. And again, we're gonna move that minor third up one octave. So we're gonna end up with this shape for our diminished chords. Then we're right back to C major. If you want some more insight on a bunch of like EJ isms, like his picking style and phrasing and stuff like that, be sure to head on over to my good buddy Andy Wood's channel. He's been doing a lot more guitar videos and stuff here on his YouTube channel here lately. He put up a great lesson a couple weeks ago about a lot of the in and outs of EJ's playing. And Andy does the best like Eric impression of anybody that I know. So pretty good authority to listen to. Be sure to check out that video and tell him Uncle Ben sent you. So like I said, this barely scratches the surface of how Eric does those triads. I'll do a more in-depth lesson on it later on. It's enough to get you started though. But just to give you a heads up, Eric doesn't do all of these root position like we were doing. We were doing all these with the root as the bass note. But Eric does all kinds of other ones where he'll put the third as the bass note. So that way you can play all these cool sounding inversions and get even more variety out of them. Next question here comes from Eric Scheibel over on Facebook. He asks, how does Uncle Ben stay focused during practice when the world is metaphorically on fire? You know, Jacob, that is a good question. And I think it's something that we can all kind of relate to right now because considering how much crazy stuff there is going on in the world, it might seem trivial to sit down and say, practice your favorite G scale or something like that. 
But you know, there's a reason why so much good art, you know, good music, comes through times of strife and trouble, you know? How many of our favorite musicians grew up in like, not necessarily ideal home lives and stuff like that, but then went on to produce amazing pieces of music, right? I think a lot of that is because when things seem completely out of control, that's when you can be the most focused on something that you can control, like your music or your practicing or whatever. I think whenever you start feeling, you know, maybe a little powerless or whatever because things in the world or in your home life are going, you know, again, out of control, it's the perfect time to put your focus towards something that you can control and make the decision to become a better player or write a better song or whatever. I think there's even a lot to say about the, I don't know, maybe even temporary joy that you get during crazy times like this, whenever you sit down in a chair, grab your guitar, there's something that's impossible for you to do, right? But then you beat it into submission by practicing your ass off, and then when you get out of the chair, you know that you could do something that was impossible for you just a few minutes ago. Little moments of control that we receive whenever we practice like that during times of stress are really what kind of keeps me afloat and keeps me going. So we can't control the fate of the world, but you do control your fate as a musician. So take this time, use it constructively, and become a better player. Next question here comes from my good buddy, Nigel Spennywin, who asks, is your real name Paul Sminas? I've already explained this to you once. My given name is actually Paul Smecker. Get it right. Next question here comes from Joseph Blackburn, who asks, what recording software do you recommend for someone who is getting started recording slash self-producing at home. I want to start with a program that I will use long term and not jump between a bunch of them trying to figure out which one suits me best. Good question. So all of my home recording experience has been built on two programs that I thought served as a really good entryway and then into some more advanced stuff. I started off using GarageBand, which is free with every Mac. It even comes on iPhones and iPads and stuff like that. I started with that and then basically whenever it got to where it couldn't do things that I wanted it to, I upgraded and went to Logic Pro X, which is just a $200 program. It's not super crazy expensive or anything, but it can do anything and it's amazing. And basically all the learning that I did in GarageBand really helped me whenever I went over to Logic. They're both programs by Apple, so the formats are relatively similar. It's just that Logic does everything that GarageBand can't. Plus, because of the fact that so many people are using GarageBand, there's a ton of tutorials and stuff on YouTube that show you how you can do anything that you're looking to do in the program. The general wisdom among guys that get into home recording and stuff is to start off on GarageBand, and once you start running into issues where it can't do things that you're looking for, upgrade to Logic. That's exactly what I did, and it's been a really smooth learning curve, so that's what I'd recommend for you too. But if you're recording at home on a PC, I gotta say, I'm completely clueless about that. I don't know what all is out there or what you should check out, so sorry about that. If you're watching this video and you know some good recording software that you can use on a PC, please be sure to drop that in the comments section below. My friend Noel Johnston asks, what's the difference between a duck? That's easy. One leg is both the same. And hey, while you're here, do me a favor and follow Noel Johnston on Instagram. Just look up Noel J Guitar. I'll put it on the screen right here. He's an incredible player that's always putting up awesome clips of really creative, fun stuff. So if you like things that are nice, give Noel a follow. So there you go, guys. Another episode of Fact You. Thank you guys for all the cool questions. Be sure to leave me some more in the comments section below. Hit me up with whatever you want to know about gear, guitar, bass, theory, movies, beer, whatever it is that you want to know. Be sure to leave me a question in the comments section below and get that thing answered on a future episode. If you like this video and want to help support my channel and get your question answered even faster, consider signing up for my Patreon page today over at patreon.com slash benellerguitars. That's all for now. Thank you guys so much for watching. Be sure to stay safe, stay healthy, and stay the hell at home. Less clicking, more picking.